So the second method that we'll look at is going to be pollution taxes. Pollution taxes. All right, so the idea here, so this other method, so this method um, imposes a tax on each unit of pollution. So think about the carbon tax. Every ton of carbon um, someone emits, they have to pay this much in terms of a tax. And so what this does is it forces, um, forces the firm to internalize these externalities. Uh, forces the firm to internalize the externality. So it makes them account for how they're affecting other people, this negative effect they're having on society when they make decisions. That's the idea behind this carbon tax or this pollution tax in general. It forces people to internalize this externality. So for instance, firms have to pay T dollars per unit of pollution. And so what firms are going to do is they're, they're going to keep um, reducing their pollution until the marginal cost of reducing their pollution is equal to the tax they could pay, right? Because they have this choice. Do I want to pay the tax and pollute? or pay myself and invest in the company in order to reduce the pollution that we're producing. Well, they're gonna keep on reducing their pollution until the cost of reducing another unit of pollution is gonna be equal to this tax. So firms um, will produce up until um, the point where the marginal cost of abatement maybe I should say reduce is maybe a better way to think about it or abate so reduce the pollution up to the point where the marginal cost of abatement equals the tax So that'd be the rational thing to do. So let's kind of quickly erase this and draw a little graph to kind of explore this final point and, and that allows us to talk about the efficiency of taxes. So again, let's draw a graph of what this policy looks like. So it's cost per unit, dollars per unit on the y-axis and an abatement on the x. So again, pollution reduction is the x. And again, let's imagine there's two different firms and they have different costs of reducing their pollution. So we're going to use the same idea as before, where you had this is firm A, the marginal cost for firm A, and then we had this other firm, firm B, which had higher marginal costs of abatement. And so now what's happening is the government's imposing this tax. That's supposed to be flat, but of T dollars. And so these firms, I'm supposed to say a T. Um, and this is supposed to be a dollar sign. Um, so these firms are making the decision, do I want to pollute or pay the tax? And so firm A, you know, beginning, this is their cost of, of reducing pollution, that's cheaper than the tax. So they'll just reduce pollution on their own, like within their firm. And they're gonna keep doing that until the cost of reducing their pollution by you know, one more unit equals the tax. They're not gonna reduce anything more on their own afterwards. They'd rather pay the tax than reduce their pollution any, any further than this point. So this is the amount of abatement, the amount of pollution reduction that firm A does. Firm B's making the same decision, but they have higher costs. And so the point at which these lines intercept, intersect is gonna be a bit further to the left. Right? They're going to reduce their pollution by a little bit more. So they have a lower cost of 
of reducing their pollution and paying this tax. They might as well just reduce their pollution on their own. And they get to this point, and any point after that, it's going to cost them more to reduce their pollution than simply pay the tax. So they'll start paying the tax. So this is how much pollution firm B is going to reduce. And notice that the marginal cost of, of abatement, of pollution reduction, is the same across all the firms. So think about the total abatement if we're thinking about in units, or you can think about it percentages, I guess, but let's think about it in units, is QA plus QB. We can't reduce this much pollution for anything cheaper than what we're doing here. We can't have firm A reduce their pollution by a bit more and firm B reduce their pollution by a bit less because the marginal costs are the same across these firms. That's what makes it efficient. So the marginal cost of abatement is equal. You know, we could have five firms and it's the same thing because we're just drawing this horizontal line between them. So just by definition, the marginal costs are going to be equal across all firms because that's the rational thing that firms would do. Marginal cost of abatement is equal across all firms. This reduces pollution um, at minimum cost. So that's what makes pollution taxes efficient. We couldn't reduce the same amount of pollution for any cheaper than we are through these taxes. So that's why economists like things like carbon taxes and things like that because it's the most efficient way of reducing pollution. Now, this, we're going to talk about cap and trade and tradable permits um, as well. That's the next kind of uh, pollution control policy that we'll look at. And it's also going to be efficient. But notice that this is going to be more efficient than the direct controls that we just saw, that first way of reducing pollution.